secret. You don't want the person who just got out of college who set up your Facebook page answering questions without any kind of advisement from, from higher ups in the company. It's too important because this is where your reputation is being built uh, for years to come. And so in the case of these tornadoes, it was known several days in advance this is likely going to be a pretty dangerous um, uh, storm incident. And so it allowed the states to start to pre-declare disaster declarations um, and, and start hitting the buttons to request federal resources. So, they were, so FEMA was able to start mobilizing federal resources to help augment local resources in the event there was a problem. So, um, you know, thankfully there, was, there were more resources that were likely needed in a lot of these storms which is always a good problem to have. So um, one of them I think we've seen, you know, has ha you know, basically been, you know, some of these, you know, social media crisis situations involving universities as well as athletic programs. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things that, you know, uh, with the Rutgers, there was um, a lot of videotape that seemed to surface. And mm -hmm. um, one of the things we've talked about here at Union and certainly with the um, with our coaches was to talk about the use of iPhones and people who have the cam, you know, the camera phones. And mm -hmm. so um, to be aware of the fact that at any given time during a practice when they're not aware that anybody's sitting up in the bleachers or on the stands or any place who might be pointing a camera at them. And the interviewer uh, said, well, uh, how about the norovirus? Uh, you know, this was an ongoing saga. And he said, well, that norovirus is caused because there's a lot of cold up north. Now, I don't know if he was saying a lot of people have colds up north or it's the cold weather, but it's really one of the silliest things that you could hear about. He was blaming the passengers. Uh, the contamination could happen at the slaughterhouse before it gets to Wolverine, or are you saying most likely it started at Wolverine? It, it's, it's likely that the contamination occurred during the slaughtering process for the most part. Okay. Doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily rule it out. I'll tell you how you you'd know. Let's just say, assume for example, that there are, um, these eleven people who are sick, they shared one thing in common. They all were exposed to the same bacteria, E. coli 015787. seven eight seven, and more specifically than that, they were all all exposed to the same genetic fingerprint of E. coli 0157. But um, they had done Twitter communications throughout the shooting. Throughout the shooting, the most beautiful job at Twitter communications through this crisis that I have ever seen from a school or from really from any organization in this type of severe crisis situation. But their downfall was that nobody knew. Nobody knew that they were tweeting. The media didn't know. The parents didn't know. So they were still getting bombarded with what's going on because nobody knew where to find it when really they were doing this phenomenal job. I mean, one of the things I notice is that he says, I just made one mistake. He never really says what the mistake is. So, you know, if, if he was being sort of ethically serious about it, he would really kind of explore the mistake and, and why it's wrong to use this kind of language. Um, but he just sort of characterizes it as a, as a mistake and as, as one mistake. Can't you forgive me for one mistake? Um, it's really what what he needs to do is say what he did wrong, why it was wrong, and ideally what he's going to do different in the future. Um, and he really doesn't do that. He just goes right from, I made a mistake, can't you forgive me? Each agency may set up their very own command center, but under the principles of, of unified command, uh, all of the people should be able to meet in one room. And so they have an awful lot to lose. Now, whether they are being made an example of or not by the Chinese government remains to be seen, but their statement did everything right. They took complete responsibility, they expressed their um, remorse, and they, as you mentioned, announced what they are going to do to take action. I think employees are confused. I think workplaces don't know how to, how to wrap their arms around workplace safety and workplace security adequately enough to just create an environment where people know what to do. And you got to pull that together. So it's the job of the company to set the record straight, on, exactly. to the extent they can. And in fact, one of the practice scenarios we worked with with this travel industry client is we used a scenario of a coach accident with people using their smartphones to communicate from the scene, you know, as well as spokespersons from law enforcement, as well as news helicopters circling overhead, and all that data was coming back to the company's command center. By 
understanding and setting your risk appetite, you'll be able to set exactly where, where that trigger should be. You know, what are we going to do if such happens? Would we respond at this point or at that point? Um, and that gives companies a lot of control over their reputational risk. If you check the Snohomish County Facebook page, they actually have been very good at giving updates and updated information that's directly directed to the residents of that area. To make sure that people are prepared with a plan, specifically those people who have uh, access and functional needs as well as those with disabilities. Uh, when you have people that are uh, living in sparsely populated areas, um, uh, shelter sites can be uh, few and far between. And when you talk about the common, combining that with the fact that you've got some people who may or may not be able to receive emergency warnings or notifications of a disaster in progress and how they might be transitioned out of a disaster area, it becomes, it complicates things quite a bit. She's got to do stuff. Actions, as we said early in this show, speak louder than words. And we need to see some real action, not just talk. To, they should have a list of every anticipated question, every every possible question. Well, that's what I do for my clients. It's like what what's every objection that can be raised, every single one. You know, most of them, they're they can anticipate about ninety eight percent of them. The ones that they can't, then they can say, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. We'll find out. This morning, when the New South Wales Fire Commissioner gave his briefing, which he's been doing, and it's been very disciplined, very planned, and extremely well done. And he inspire as a spokesperson, he inspires confidence because he's very straightforward, very pragmatic, and very practical, brave when he needs to be grave, and it's been very, very grave. If you look at what happened at Dunkin' Donuts, clearly somebody who has been trained and is acting in the best interest of the organization. Uh, and that's what's demonstrated in this video and I think it speaks to the fact that in this digital and social age every employee at some level is potentially at a moment's notice a spokesperson and then if he had focused his message on on those expressions of empathy uh, and demonstrated that rather than his own stress and thirst um, it would have uh, been much better you would think that they the boards of directors and, and places and, and groups that are picking the CEOs should be paying attention to that too in terms of you know do we have the kind of person in here that can lead us uh, confidently when there's a crisis situation and part of leading is being the the public face of of this heighten your profanity filter on Facebook if you don't have it set at high you should certainly have it set on high to go into the filters in Facebook a lot of people don't even know you have a keyword filter in Facebook and put in hot words that you know people are going to use that that are going to cause a problem all you have to do is take those out they can be hate speech or you know sexual com content that kind of thing just take all just type all those words in and Facebook will autom automatically kick out any posts that fall in, into those bad words I think it was a state troop I didn't have his title but he did a very good job uh, when he couldn't answer questions he said this is an ongoing investigation but he right. did just enough information about the chronology to get to get the reporters enough to get started on their stories right. and then you know you say we'll have an update in a few hours when we learn more um, but my guess is and it's purely speculation based on my experience that that there were probably cadaver dogs that detected what they considered to be um, human remains and it takes a lot of effort to be able to dig up all of that debris and all of that mud in order to confirm or not confirm that that dog was right. Because it's such a big company, it occurs to me there are other people now with the spotlight off Mary Barra, at least temporarily, literally out of the spotlight of the C-SPAN cameras, if you will, um, and the international media. It, it, there are other people in that company who might be good spokespeople who could you know, pick up the football now and, and carry it for a little bit to get some of the other messages out uh, and that's and that's something we've talked about on the show. I know, Trip, you, you're shaking your head because you know sometimes it is appropriate to have the CEO front and center, and this is certainly one of those examples. But there are other kinds of crisis situations where I have thought that hey, you know what, you didn't need to put the CEO out there. It could have been a spokesperson. It could have been some executive. And there are other times I've thought, my gosh, people died. Where the heck is your CEO? Why isn't he or she on the ground? hugging people and expressing condolences. But it's not ultimately a failure if we go, we messed up, 
and here are the three things that we need to immediately do better next time. Um, and here's the plan to do it. 